The Pokemon company and Nintendo invited me to play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet hands-on at a private event. Here are the only pictures I was allowed to take in the venue and share with you guys. The version of the game that I played was Pokemon Scarlet, but this was a developmental build of the game, and my opinions may not reflect what the final retail version has to offer. Make sure to watch entirely and not just skip around because throughout this video, there is a lot of new and detailed information from the Pokemon company that you may not have heard about anywhere else officially. So get ready for this exclusive information, subscribe to the channel to get Mariah down to the finish line, please. There are two rules for this hands-on demo. You can't enter the Naranja Academy and you can't explore beyond the border. The explorable area is outlined on this map and is marked in yellow. What I marked in red was what I was able to explore. The Nintendo rep insisted that I try one of the three types of story quests that were shown off in the trailers. The Champion Path Victory Road Gym Battle with Brassius, the Path of Legends Titan Battle with Cloth, or the Starfall Street Path featuring Mela. I chose to use my time fully to explore the world as much as I could before doing one of the story quests. Let's answer all the questions that matter. When I started the demo and walked towards the iconic science guy from my house and made a left, I was immediately introduced to Pokemon everywhere. If I looked left, I would see a bunch of Pokemon moving around. If I looked to the right, more Pokemon. If I walked up to trees and moved my camera up, I saw three different Pokemon species in one tree. There were even Pokemon flying above me like Hoppin. If you look in the little streams of water, you'll find Pokemon in the puddles and even in the ocean. They they are everywhere. This game is full of life and you won't be disappointed at all by an empty world. Is the overworld as big as the Pokemon company wants you to think? Going into the game, I expected the overworld to be big because I looked at the trailers and the official art map that the Pokemon company released. However, when I played the game, all my expectations were surpassed and the map felt much larger than what I had imagined. So Pokemon players will find the size of the world to be very big and fun to explore. I didn't even get to explore the complete area that I was in because of the time limit. Did the overworld feel like any landmarks were copy and pasted. Every aspect of the overworld that I explored felt unique and nothing felt like it was copy and pasted. Is there really freedom of choice in the game? You do not have to follow any paths. You can spend your time however you want in this game. How you determine your adventure, what Pokemon you want to catch, what trainers you want to battle, gym leader order to fight, team star bases to take down, and Titan Pokemon order is all up to you. As the player, you get to imagine the path you want to go for in this game, which makes this Pokemon game stand out and feel like a dream come true. This is a welcoming change to the Pokemon franchise that I hope stays in all of the future games. Do you have to travel specific pathways to get to a location? Unlike previous Pokemon games that followed the linear approach of traveling to towns, with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there are no set pathways. There are openings and passageways between areas like small caves and shortcuts, so you don't have to follow the main big roads that the game shows you. For example, in my demo, I traveled to the canyon area by crossing a river from the first area, then entered a small cave cave and arrived at Artazone. I'm sure there are going to be tons of different hidden pathways and big caves in the game. If you pay attention to your trailer footage, you'll be able to spot tiny caves like the ones I encountered. How does a day and night cycle work in this game? You cannot change time in the game manually. Time is not based on your Nintendo Switch time or date either. There are no options to change a specific time in the day like there was in Pokemon Legends Arceus. The Nintendo rep told me that there is an in-game time that rotates on its own. Pokemon Levels. As you move further away from the first area or climb up to higher points of the map, you will start to notice higher level Pokemon and their evolution forms. Was the variety of Pokemon that you saw good? During my travel on the pathway I chose, I saw tons of Pokemon of various typings that players easily build their teams with. This includes early dragon Pokemon like Gumi and Swablu. In a previous video I did before I was invited to the hands-on experience, I analyzed the trailers and plotted out a lot of Pokemon locations based on the landmarks that they were shown in the background of the trailers. And I used this information that I studied to bump into a few of the Pokemon and they were exactly where I thought they would be. I noticed that some Pokemon do continue to repeat in different areas and their placement could vary depending on if they're by water, in the trees, flying, or in an open field. So it's not like every area is going to have 100% different Pokemon. It feels natural to have Pokemon I may have not wanted to catch in a certain area show up in a new location if I change my mind as I was adventuring. Are there any new or returning Pokemon you can talk about that the Pokemon company has not officially shown in any trailers yet? I personally saw a lot of new Pokemon and some returning Pokemon, but I can't say what they are, but what I can say is that the Pokemon company has confirmed to me that other Pokemon like Mimikyu and Decidueye will be in the game 
when you get your hands on it during the release. Please don't ask me anything more on this. Were there any outbreaks or hordes of Pokemon in the overworld? The words outbreak or hordes weren't used or confirmed, but there are many different ways that you can find groups of Pokemon in the game. During my travel, I bumped into Pokemon of the same species and the same evolution. You could also bump into the final evolutions of a Pokemon line surrounded by their previous evolutions. You can find Pokemon of different species even interacting with each other like Zangus, Surviper, it's a Titan and Cub Shoe. How do wild Pokemon behave? As I was exploring, I encountered a lot of Pokemon and every single Pokemon had their own unique behavior. For example, some Pokemon like Lechonk would mind their own business. When Dunspar saw that I was close by, it immediately dug into the ground, running away from me. The moment some Pokemon laid their eyes on me, they ran up to me and bumped into me to initiate a battle. These would be considered aggressive Pokemon. What are the ways to encounter a Pokemon? There are three ways to interact with wild Pokemon in the overworld. Walking into a Pokemon immediately will trigger a battle. Throwing your Pokemon via the Pokeball at another Pokemon in the wild also can trigger this battle. Another interaction I had was throwing my Wiglet out and a Hoppip that was flying in the sky immediately started making its way down towards me. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, you would have to whistle at these flying Pokemon to get their attention. You can also use the auto battle feature once you have thrown out your selected Pokemon to battle. Let's talk about the auto battle feature. How does it work? In order to use the auto battle feature, you have to throw out your Pokemon first. After that, you have to press a button in order for your Pokemon to go and fight the closest wild Pokemon. I asked the Nintendo rep, what are the two most important factors of auto battle? And they mentioned that it was the Pokemon type matchup and level difference that was factored in the most. So you don't have to worry about what Pokemon moves the Pokemon has. Please be aware they will take damage from doing auto battle. I noticed you can only have one Pokemon doing auto battling in the overworld at a time. What do wild Pokemon drop? Wild Pokemon will drop a specific item related to them that will be later used in the TM machine and may also drop items that could be useful for Pokemon breeding. An example of an item that dropped for me when catching a certain Pokemon was the Everstone. Let's talk about TM machines. Completing main story quests like the Titan fights, Team Star fights, or gym battles give large amounts of LP. Turning in specific Pokemon items dropped also gives LP. This means you aren't forced to complete a story in order to get TM. So you can just farm Pokemon, turn in their items, get LP, and buy more TMs. Did you see any Wild Terra Pokemon? In the most recent four 14 minute Pokemon trailer, they introduced us to wild terror Pokemon that are glowing. I encountered the same Jigglypuff from the trailer in the exact same spot, but the difference was that this Pokemon was actually walking around rather than staying in one spot like the trailer. Throughout the overworld, you will notice glowing Pokemon walking around, and these Pokemon sometimes can be higher level and much more challenging than other Pokemon. I noticed some wild terror Pokemon that I encountered out leveled my entire Pokemon team that was already boosted for the purposes of the gameplay session in the first area. Were you able to see different Terra types in the wild that we haven't seen in the trailers? Yes, but please look forward to discovering these unseen Terra types for yourselves when you get your hands on the game. Do overworld shiny Pokemon exist? The Nintendo rep did not give me a direct answer, but this menu confirms shiny Pokemon being a part of your profile from the trailer. How to find them is to be determined. I'm going to assume that shiny Pokemon are in the overworld based on how the profile shows it off, and previous games like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and Pokemon Legends Arceus also have overworld world shiny pokemon so why wouldn't the first open world adventure game for pokemon not have it do different pokemon spawn at different times of the day during my playthrough i encountered certain pokemon like gengar psychic pokemon like drowsy or pokemon like murkrow and honchkrow and they only appeared at night these were just some of the examples i encountered when i was playing do pokemon despawn yes if you defeat a pokemon in battle it disappears if the pokemon runs away from you based on its animation it also disappears i was not able to test this out as much by going far away from the Pokemon and then coming back to see if it's still there or if the exact same Pokemon with the same nature, Terra type, and stat distribution would repeat if I came into a building and came out and met it again. Most likely Pokemon reset upon moving really far away from them or by entering into a building and then coming back out. What can you tell us about the legendary Pokemon from your preview? As mentioned before, this was an altered gameplay experience. I was able to already ride the legendary Pokemon from the moment I started the playthrough. The only things I can mention about the legendary is that they were able to run, jump, climb, and swim. Basically do everything they were shown to do in the trailers. Something really cool about riding on the legendary Pokemon is that when you initiate a battle with wild Pokemon, you can see that you are still riding your legendary Pokemon during the battle when throwing out your party Pokemon. Any more information about the legendary Pokemon, you would have to find out for yourself 
itself in the game or wait for a trailer to reveal that information. Let's talk about catching Pokemon. If you paid attention to most of the trailers when Pokeballs were thrown out, you'd notice the speed is a lot faster than previous Pokemon games. A lot of people were confused by this, thinking that this is the critical capture mechanic. When I threw my Pokeballs to catch a Pokemon, I noticed the speed was faster than any other Pokemon game. I asked the Nintendo rep why it was so fast. They wanted to make the world seamless like it was flowing, so it doesn't feel like a slow interaction when you are in battle. How does Terra Transformation work in your Pokemon party? You are allowed to do one Terra Transformation in a Pokemon battle. As seen in this footage, when you select Terrastalize, you can see the icon symbol for what the Pokemon Terra type would be, and then you can proceed to Terrastalize. When you select a move that does an enhanced damage, you will see a subtle glow on the Pokemon as you select that specific move. From what I was told, the Pokemon lose their original typing, but maintain the damage enhancement that they had in their previous stab moves along with a new enhancement in their Terra type. Once you use up your terrestrialization, you have to go heal your Pokemon in order to use it again. Here is some new footage of the Pokemon Center healing area. And you can see a new aesthetically pleasing interface that has all the Pokemon zoomed in as they are being healed up. Can you turn the experience share on or off? EXP share, as you can see from the auto battle EXP screen, after you beat a Pokemon or from a regular battle, all the Pokemon on the left side in your party gain experience. I was not able to explore if there was an option or not to turn this off, but most likely it is probably a staple feature of this game. One of the most exciting changes to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are when your Pokemon evolve in the overworld. Changing the evolution to happen in front of you no matter where you are in the world looks so much better than evolution screens from previous games. How do trainer battles work? Throughout the areas I was exploring, there were tons of trainers randomly standing in the overworld. At first, my instinct was to avoid them, but the Nintendo rep let me know they will not interact with me unless I interact with them. To make sure, I bumped my character into the trainer and nothing happened. This is an amazing new feature because you can focus on your exploration and not worry about being interrupted by NPC trainers. Let's talk about the Pokedex. How many Pokemon are in the Pokedex? I know many of you want this answer. However, I I am not allowed to comment on this, but as I mentioned before, there is an extremely good diversity of Pokemon that I encountered in the game. Trainers can expect to build amazing teams filled with many Pokemon that can be even more diverse with Terra typing. What cool stuff did you see in the Pokedex? The Pokedex screen had very cool features like recent caught section, recent activity, and some mysterious blacked out Pokemon images that may be around the area that I haven't registered in the Pokedex. Another cool feature on the Pokedex was the Pokemon Habitat. I had a chance to look at the Habitat section of the Pokedex, and what I saw was certain parts of a mini-map lit up in squares in the area the Pokemon would be. There were also further hints, since the map is so big, to let you know that Pokemon could be around trees or water, etc. Pokemon Battles One of the big questions I had was, what angles are the camera during battle? Because when I started my fight with the wild Pokemon, the camera was not moving at all. I then moved my joystick and realized that you decide what camera angle you want the fight to look like. This is the first time in a Pokemon game that you can do this. This. this is a welcoming change to Pokemon battles that I hope stays in the franchise forever. When you look around during these fights, you can see other Pokemon that you saw running around before the battle still running around during the battle, so it doesn't disconnect you from the environment, unlike other Pokemon games that lock you into its own environment during a battle, ignoring all the things happening in the background. Is there normal currency in the game? Yes, the regular Pokemon currency is still in the game and it has not been replaced by LP. You can see that in this footage here, after beating the trainer, you get the Pokemon monies. You can use this money to buy Pokeballs, healing items, and many other stuff from the shops. Let's talk about the three paths in the game. As you're making your way into the town of Artazone, you can see that the player is going to walk into this building. Inside of this building, we're introduced to Nimona. In this new footage of Nimona, you can see her talking to you and then giving you three super potions. After that, you'll do the gym challenge, which features a bunch of Sunflora, and then go on to face Brassius. The first one was Brassius. Brassius was another option during the demo, but I didn't choose to fight him personally since a lot of footage was revealed about it. From the trailer, you can see that Brassius has a small live and a pseudo wudo that turns into a grass terra type. So you would want to be careful and not bring a fire Pokemon because pseudo wudo can probably use rock attack. So Pokemon will make it challenging to people who think that fire Pokemon is the only way to beat a grass gym and may be surprised by that pseudo wudo. During the demo, no other gym leaders were able to be challenged like Iono from Lavincia gym that was recently revealed with her Pokemon belly ball or Grusha from the Glaciato gym and his Pokemon, Satitan. The Path of Legends. As you saw in the trailer, you were introduced to Arvin, who is going to be involved in the Path of Legends. As soon as my character reached the canyon area, 
I got a call from Arvin talking about the Titan and its location on the map. I decided not to go to that area. The footage in the trailer showed that it will have a large HP bar and the most effective way to beat it is by having a super effective terror type to take it down. Once you take it down, it runs off. The further details of this storyline will have to be found out when you play the game or if the Pokemon company decides to reveal more information on it. The Team Star battle is the one I personally chose to do with my hands-on playthrough. The reason why I chose Mela is because it had the most gameplay features attached to it. As you entered the Team Star compound, you were only allowed to bring the first three Pokemon in your party. Then there was a 10 minute auto battle when you entered in to fight all the Team Star grunts. Every single one of the grunts I faced had fire type Pokemon, so it was very easy to wipe them out because I had a Wiglet in my party which had the type advantage and I had over leveled Pokemon that they gave me to use, so that was the level advantage. Also, the Pokemon that I was given were a little bit over leveled, so they were able to wipe out the grunt Pokemon very fast. When you throw each of your Pokemon out to fight, you have to aim currently at the direction where you want your Pokemon to attack and press R to throw them out. You will constantly do this until you take out 30 Pokemon. The Nintendo rep in me that these little red vending machines in the background of the Team Star area can be used to restore the health of your Pokemon to help complete the challenge. This is new information, by the way. After you complete this, Mela will come out of the garage, standing on top of the Star Mobile vehicle to challenge you in a fight. Mela uses Torkoal against you that has the ability Drought, which causes water type attacks to have lower damage and be weaker and increase the damage of fire type moves. So this would trip up a lot of players who think water types will be effective against your Pokemon. I love this because it adds a level of difficulty to this fight that I thought wasn't really there. You're able to then use all six Pokemon in your party, not be locked to the first three. After you beat her ace Pokemon, Torkoal, you then have to battle the Starmobile, which was a very challenging fight. So don't take these Team Star battles lightly and prepare very well beforehand. You can see here that this is the starting menu customization. You can see ready, change hairstyle, and change look. You notice that in the change hairstyle, you can go through the various hairstyles that the game provides for you. And if you click on change look, you can see the various other options like eye shape and eyelashes and eyebrows that it has in the customization. Once that's all done, you hit ready and you can start your game. If you press D-pad left on your controller, you can change your clothes and hairstyle. But the best part is that you can do this anywhere. I was able to do this myself while exploring, so it's not a town or city only feature, which a lot of people didn't catch. The Nintendo rep said that you can change things like your skin color, which is only an option at the start of the game. Another one you can't change is the color of your hair. This can only be done in the hair salon in selected towns. Clothing stores also exist in the game, but I didn't get an opportunity to go into one and see the various options that they have. The camera by far is one of my favorite features in the game. To access the camera, all you have to do is press D-pad down to access it. You'll notice that you'll be able to take pictures from the front of the camera, take pictures of Pokemon to make it almost feel like a Pokemon Snap experience, and you'll also be able to take selfies. I think selfies are the coolest part because you can see all the things happening in the background. I'm very interested to see in what players can bring to the table with the funniest selfies they'll be able to do. Maybe a Pokemon attacking you and you're taking a selfie in the middle of it. Let's talk about the picnic feature. And the big one is how does breeding work in the game? I was not able to figure out how to get an egg to show up at the picnic. I asked a Nintendo rep about breeding, but all they told me is that you have to find out for yourself. I also asked about Pokemon daycare centers and got the same exact response. I was not told no, so that gives me hope for Pokemon breeding. Breeding mechanics still have to be discovered in this game and exactly how they work, we need to find out. Some of the picnic features that I tried out was throwing a ball and watching all my Pokemon chase after it. You're also able to give your Pokemon showers and clean them up. In this new footage with Belly Bolt, you can see it having a very nice shower and cleaning up. I'm assuming that the showers and playing with your Pokemon can increase their friendship so that they can dodge attacks at the most critical times in battle, or you can evolve certain Pokemon that require high friendship to evolve. The sandwich feature is going to be a big one. From the preview footage, you can see how many numbers are there on the left. So there's probably going to be a lot of sandwiches that give a lot of different buffs. You can also see that they give various buffs for different typings like encounter power, raid power, and catching power. So if you are focusing on a specific type of Pokemon in your gameplay, these will definitely help enhance that. Another feature returning back to the game are Pokemon boxes. If you need to access a Pokemon at any time that is in your storage, you can do it right from the convenience of your menu. Let's talk about multiplayer. During the event, I was on local multiplayer and I was the one responsible to set up a raid. I approached the Terra Raid Den and invited other players. I had a code on my screen and I told everyone that code so they could join. The one I did was a Grass Terra type three star Wingle. In this new Terra Raid footage, you can see four players going up against a Water Terra.
Terra type Ralt. You'll also notice the main time counting down in orange, and you can see all the players attacking seamlessly without having to wait for other trainers to do so. You also don't have to be KO'd to use these cheer options. The cheer options will help boost attacks, defenses, or just heal Pokemon, so you have to use them very strategically. After completing a Terra Raid battle, the rewards felt very familiar to Pokemon Sword and Shield. I noticed things like experience candy dropping, specific items that Pokemon drop that you'll be using in the TM machines, berries, and much more. Since I personally did a low level three star Terra Raid, I got a small experience candy. So if you played Pokemon Sword and Shield, this will be very familiar to you and you should know what to expect depending on the difficulty of the Terra Raid. I wasn't allowed to do any other multiplayer features besides the Crystal Raid battle during the hands-on preview, but there were tons of multiplayer features that the Pokemon company has shown, like inviting people to your world to explore, racing with your legendary Pokemon across the map, hanging out in Mesa Gosa to pass the time, taking pictures together, and being able to use cool emotes in multiplayer as well. I also asked questions about what happens when someone sees a shiny Pokemon in your world and another player grabs it. I didn't get these answers to those questions. And I guess we have to wait for future game trailers or information from the Pokemon company or when we just get our hands on the game. I'll be posting some official new screenshots on my Twitter, so go follow me there. If you want to see some Pokemon map locations I did before the preview, click this video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.